What's the word, y'all? Just when I thought every publication was done ranking NBA players, The Ringer came in out of nowhere to drop a top 100 players in the NBA list. You know what? I, I kind of like the timing, man. Because, for example, the ESPN list, they try to project the next the next season and obviously it's a lot harder to project how good a player will be in three months versus watching a couple months in and play and then and then ranking them there but no i'm not doing this reaction slash reading to nitpick between the 86th best player and the 87th best player that's kind of irrelevant here um i just very curious about the perception of certain players that's all personally if i were going to be ranking nba players i'd probably do it in in tiers because like i mentioned the 21st best player is probably, you're, you're pulling hairs between him and the 20th and the, the 22nd. You know what I'm saying? So, again, don't take it too seriously. Shout out to the ringer for the content because we're we going to react. Again, at the end of the day, this is just the opinions of me and whoever was involved. But let's see. Welcome to the ringer's top 100 players in the NBA. A year-round, around-the-clock ranking of the players making the biggest impact in the league right now. Off the first sentence, I absolutely absolutely love it because they're saying that they're going to be updating this very, very often. And I'm curious if like one bad slash not so great week can drop somebody 13 spots or something like that. Throughout the regular season into the offseason, our foursome of analysts, Rob Mahoney, J. Kyle Mann, Kevin O'Connor, and Michael Pena will update this list based on recent results. Check back regularly for revised rankings, fresh analysis, uh, new features, fan letters from the ringer, friends and families and more. They also did a league pass rankings, which is something that I have wanted to do for so very long, but I, I hate when people use like, I'm busy as an excuse to not do work, but legitimately it's it takes a lot of time. And I might react to this one eventually. Oh, they saying that Zion Williamson is must see TV and John Moran is number two, oh, I love it. Uh, we might react to that one later this week or and at some other time. So it starts off at the bottom with DeAndre Hunter, Derek White, Grant Williams, and Kelly Olenek. Okay, so th this is very, very similar to their like draft, um, mock draft thing what Kevin O'Connor does every single season. It got the accolades of the player where they were drafted and it tells you their skin, skill set and stuff. This might be a really good tool for somebody that doesn't know the game of basketball but is looking to get into it. Um, am I going to really react and disagree with players 100 through 79? Nah, it's not extremely important. So we got Tobias Harris, John Collins, Jonas Valanciunas, and then Kyle Lowry. Hmm, I'm trying to figure out if I disagree with anything. I honestly think this might be kind of low for Tobias Harris. Um, he's averaging 17 points per game, 40% three-point shooter. He's rebounding well. The defense is never going to be elite, but he's a decent-ish defender. And when Joel B was out or um, Tyrese Maxey slash James Harden, his points per game went up to like 20-ish, 22-ish points per game. Something that we all know he has in a tank. One thing I say about Tobias Harris, again, he's just a cool player. So maybe it is good that he's right here because he feel he is a cool player. Because of the length and the, the size of his contract, I don't know. I, I don't want to say he's underrated because that feels disingenuous. But like people look at him and the money attached to him and say that he's bad when in reality he's just overpaid. I think you can, can be overpaid but also be okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, so Tobias Harris there, John Collins, who again feels like he's going to get traded this season. Then we're going to really see he has the potential to be a lot higher than this. But this season, bro, it's been weird. And then he got injured, yada, yada. Jonas Valanciunas is a pure bru bruiser of a big man, which makes sense. I mean, he's played a crucial part in New Orleans Pelicans and their identity right now, being a team that's going to beat your ass in the paint uh, because Jonas Valanciunas does that. And I only know if y'all remember last season, he was one of the league leaders in three-point shooting through the first couple months. Then we have Kyle Lowry. Um, who started off slow, and again, I still can't believe that this man is playing the amount of minutes that he is. One of a kind problem solver. That's that's an okay description of Kyle Lowry. Oh wow. Okay. So this feels weird. We got Cam Johnson, Julius Randle, and Benedict Matherin as the next three players. Ben becomes the first rookie to be acknowledged so far, and I'm I'm gonna assume. That Paolo Bancaro is also on this list, and those might be the only two rookies that make the top 100 players. Benedict Matherin, if you look at his splits and his averages throughout the course of the season, they've dropped off every single month. Not saying he has hit the rookie wall, but he's not going out and doing what he was doing through the first month of the season, which is fine. We're talking about a year one player at the age of 20. Um, but he has cooled down a little bit alongside him and his Indiana Pacer brethren. Um, I'm, I'm recording this right after they won a game against the Warriors, so you know I'm, I'm I'm saying bad things about him off a of dub, but him being higher than Julius Randle feels kind of weird. And I know Julius Randle is a very um, divisive player in the NBA. That's the word I was looking for. 
um, because obviously at the All NBA season a few years ago during the COVID season, then he came back and he stunk it up. Body language was all that bad and everything. Maybe I'm high on Julius Randle right now because the Knicks are in the midst of a win streak and he looked really, really good recently. Um, but I, again, I'm pulling hairs to say, oh, Julius Randle deserves to be higher than Benedict Matherin, but it is what it is. Norman Powell, Nikola Vucevic makes the list. I didn't honestly, as somebody that watched Vucevic play every single day, I am surprised that he's even on the list. Um, but I guess I can't. Has he been better than Ben, than Julius, than Kyle Lowry? Has he been better than Jonas Valanciunas this season? That is a genuine question. You let me know in the comment section. So we got um, Norm Powell, Vucevic, Zubac, Alex Caruso. I'm I feel good about Alex Caruso being higher on the list than Vucevic. Um, again, I don't know if Vucevic deserves to be here, but I know for sure Alex Caruso when it comes to to impact, even if it means you know not scoring the ball, because I think at this point he's still shooting bad from three. Well, what are your overall averages? Five points per game, 35% from three, which is higher now than what it was earlier in the season. But the the eye test tells you that this man is all over the place. He's getting steals. He he just impacts winning which is weird to say on the team and he's playing for a team that doesn't win a lot of games but if he were to be playing on another championship caliber team like the LA Lakers from a few years ago his impact would be way more overseen um, but he's been amazing so far I wonder what this badge mean potential goat what would that badge mean for Alice Caruso I don't know Jordan Clarkson Jalen Green Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma that's kind of crazy because I would I would go out on a limb and say these four players are very similar in their in their archetypes. Maybe so, maybe these three, because Kuzma's bigger and he also is a really, really good rebounder at his size. And he has showed um throughout the course of his career. I guess you could say the same thing about Jordan Poole since he's also an NBA champion. That Kuzma can step aside and be the third, fourth option this season. He's kind of like number two. I guess it's number three, really. Um, but I would say these guys are like elite level. I'm gonna get my shot off, guys. Um, Jordan Poole and Jalen Green, I think, do it a little bit better than what Jordan Clarkson. But this season, Jordan Clarkson has been amazing. I guess I'm projecting a little bit for Jalen Green. But based on year two players, sophomore year, he's one of the best in his class right now. He's been amazing. I mean, I don't know if the shooting splits are going to say that or anything. Yeah, 32% for three, but 22 points per game. He's electric. I, I really like that he's on his list because I wasn't completely sure if he'd get the love. And then Jordan Poole slightly above him. I could see an argument for you saying that Jalen Green is a better basketball player than Jordan Poole right now. Um, but I'm, again, it's one spot difference, so who cares? Mike Conley, Wendell Carter, Malcolm Brogdon. Interesting. Um, okay, let me see who's slightly below that. Okay. Mike Conley, I mean, when the Utah Jazz start to lose a bunch of games, it was no coincidence that it was right after Mike Conley went down with his injury. He still is a really good floor general, as they're talking about in here. He still plays some solid defense. I'm actually now surprised to look at these badges. Kuzma got zero badges, bro. That's crazy. He's injury concerns for sure. Savvy vet. Okay. Um, Wendell Carter, shout out to my boy. 16 points per nine rebounds. Get well soon, my boy. Miss watching you play. Malcolm Brogdon, I think, is in the perfect position for where he needs to be in his career. Not expected to do anything but come in and score a couple buckets, facilitate just a little bit, get a get four boards or so. You know what I'm saying? Perfect position. Um, again, like I said, I'm not here to nitpick they list. I'm just curious the perception. Kevin Herter is not a guy that I expected to make a top 100 list before the season. But if you watched him play this year, absolutely he deserves to be here. He's cooled down a little bit because early in the season he was shooting like 50-something percent from three. But still 41% is really, really good. And his contract is really, really good if he can continue this production. Spencer Dinwiddie, Christian Wood, Klay Thompson, and Aaron Gordon. I'm actually surprised to see Aaron Gordon this low considering I believe he's having such an amazing season. Defensively dynamic weapon who doesn't need the ball in his hands. So he's averaging 16 and a half points per game. Six re I hate that he keep closing when I click. Six rebounds and he's shooting 38% from three. And I mentioned in the video a little while ago that he started off the season without the ability to shoot. Like he, the first two weeks, he couldn't hit a shot. So he's been absolutely on fire. Clay Thompson's cool to see him on his list because he's starting to put it together. I mean, the first couple of weeks, he definitely wasn't even in the conversation, but good to see him. And I'm sure he probably climb up the list as he gets, continues to look better. Clint, Scotty Barnes, Bojan Bogdanovic, and Keldon Johnson. So I'm wondering how much of this is projection for the rest of the season or what? Because though Scotty Barnes has been all right, obviously his impact this season is not what it was his rookie year. Um, I, I, I don't know if I want to say sophomore slump, but it seems like he might have hit a soft wall right now that he got to just push through. Um, so I can, I can see you saying like, man, so far this season, strictly off this season, Aaron Gordon has been better than Scotty, but this is two spots. So again, who cares? Bojan, Keldon, and CJ McCollum. See, 
CJ hasn't had a good season. He just hasn't. 17 points per game, six assists, and I'm only comparing it to himself. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to compare him to Dame or an all-star caliber player, but from the CJ that we've seen over the last couple of seasons, this is not the same version of him. He's just, we know those shots will eventually fall, and he's just uh, extremely streaky in the moment. He's still after 17, so I guess that's better than I thought. I thought it was around the 15 range. About six assists, he is still the point guard of one of the best teams in basketball. But again, if it's based off this season, I can see the argument that some of the people beneath him have been better. Al Horford, Denver sale carry Irvin at 66 um 25 points per not having the greatest efficiency season from three but four and a half assists one steal per uh I, I think that's really low for Kyrie's season so far um and they said this is fluid so I believe that when the Brooklyn Nets continue to win more games and he continues to pull out this production it'll go higher but this this feels pretty low for the season that Kyrie Irvin has put together obviously he's been suspended and Missed some games here and there, but the games Kyrie has played, I think I can I can think of like two stinkers off the top of my head. But every other game, he's been Kyrie Irving, so that feels pretty low. Uh, we got 65 with it being Tyler Hero. Myers Turner's having a really solid season with 17 points per game, great three-point percentage. Now, this changes the entire perspective of this video because Rob is at 63 without playing a single second. I was under the impression that they were, they were taking into account only what we've seen so far this season. Okay, it changes things quite a bit. I don't know. I don't know. It changes things quite a bit. We're going to continue to move on. Like Michael Porter Jr. this season, 16 points per, 43% from three. Good season. But he's been now for, I don't know. I don't like. We just, we just, we sit back, man. We sit back and we just, we just react. Franz Wagner, Cade Cunningham, Anthony Simons, Fred Van Vliet. A letter from a fan. What is this? Oh, okay. So this is cool. This is cool. So they did mention earlier um, that fans will be able to write in and stuff. Freddie in comparison to his previous season where he's an all-star and stuff has not been on the same level as well his shooting has fallen off a little bit today specifically he had a really good game so hopefully this is the moment where he turned it back a little bit and start to hit more shots um, but i think they end up losing that game actually to the kings but he individually had a good shooting night so again based on this season i can see the argument that a few people underneath him might have been better so far this season but whatever marcus smart kind of seems low for Marcus Smart. DeAndre Aiden. DeAndre Aiden had a like a two-week stretch where he looked really, really damn good. And then yet another two-week stretch where I'm like, what the hell happened? Paolo Macaro. I mentioned that there might have been two people, two rookies from this draft class to make the list. I have no qualm, qualm, qualms, qualms about Paolo Macaro being on this list and being this high because he is a grown man in this league already. Tyrese Max has been out for so long, I forgot what even type of stats he was putting up. 23 points per on great three-point shooting. Makes sense to me. Porzingis has been great. Jaron has been really, really good. I would argue Jaron deserves to be higher. Based on what I've seen this season about Jaron Jackson Jr. and his defense this year, and then his offense uh, catching up to an extent, I believe he deserves to be higher than 52. Maybe they're taking into consideration he missed a good chunk at the beginning of the season. Regardless, Jaron deserves to be better, in my opinion. Jalen Brunson has been great. Just saw this man kill my Bulls tonight. Sucked. But, I mean, as a basketball enjoyer, he had a lot of moments in his game. I was like, damn. See, this right here and you remember I, I i want people to know in case you don't chris paul is my favorite player of all time he has not been better than a lot of the people beneath him this season alone again strictly based off this season from from me he has not been better than than poor zingas jaren J, even jalen brunson right now i can't say he has been better the passing is still going to be good um the scoring is falling off a cliff the efficiency is falling off a cliff He's slower, obviously, being 37 years old. Year 18 is something you admire that he's still at least solid at this point. He ain't been better than the couple guys beneath him, but whatever. Jared Allen, LaMelo Ball. Shout out to Melo for coming back to see uh, this tonight. Tonight he came back, um, and he looked pretty good for not being in basketball for a while. Jamal Murray started off slow, but recently got better, and I think tonight he struggled. But either way, I, I think they're taking consideration reputation and stuff in their list, which is fine. But I, again, off the first impression, I thought this was, since it is a fluid list, I thought it was strictly based on this season. Anthony Edwards, 22 points per game. Um, his defense, as far as passing lanes go, over the last two weeks ago, so, uh, so have been amazing. I mean, he's averaging like three or four-ish block uh, uh, steals per game recently. Jer Jeremy Grant has been stellar. I'd like to see him on his list. Mikael Bridges has been one of the better two-way players. And this is his shooting splits after yesterday. He shot like two for 22. So imagine what they were like before <laughs> before that. Emo has been an, a, amazing. Um, so I can't be mad at him. I'm actually excited about him being this high on his list as an Emo stand. 
Okay, OG Ananobi and Brooke Lopez back to back. It's fitting considering they're two of the front runners for Defensive Player of the Year. Zach Levine hits the 40 rank. Um, and and you know what? I'll take it based on what he's been this season. I'll take that. Wiggs has been better. I would I would say. I mean the numbers say that too. Two point per game difference. The shooting splits are great. And then Wiggins also plays great defense. So yeah, yeah, I'll give you that Wiggs. Lowry, Sabonis, Bradley, Dejounte, Rudy. Okay. Rudy Gobert, say what you want about him. I mean, the stats speak for himself about Rudy Gobert and his defense. The team in itself still has struggled defensively, but when he's on, it's great. When he's off, it's not. So, yeah, Draymond Green, again, the counter stats for Draymond won't be great. But I would say on the offensive scoring, Tim, Draymond has looked better this season than the last couple. I would say that. Bam at 32. Bane is at 31. Ah, shout out to him. Shout out to Desmond Bain. Kawhi Leonard. Um... An all-time winner and two-way monster would easily crack the top 10 in his rankings if his body had allowed him to. Okay. I mean, if you don't use that, then then yeah. Um, again, this season, it's been a bit rough. Drew Holiday. I spent more time on the bottom half of the list than the top half. Because, I, again, I think that when we get to this this level, we're talking tiers. So, Drew Holiday, De'Aaron Fox, uh, Darius Garland, Chris Middleton. I could argue that they are on the same tier of player. Carthing Towns on this season. I'm comparing it to the people around him. I, yeah, I guess that I guess that's fitting. Uh James Harden at 24. Brandon Ingram at 23. DeMar DeRozan at 22. Tyrese Halliburton nearly cracks the top 20. 19 points per 11 assists, almost a 40% three-point shooter. And that's with a really bad shooting game the other night. The new point guard God. Should I have been reading these excerpts? The new point God. Hey, those are some big shoes to fill, Tyrese. I love it, though. I love it, man. So we got Jalen Brown at 20, Jalen Brown at 20, Trey Young at 19. The roles are different. So, again, I will be splitting hairs trying to tell me, no, 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 no. I could agree with Trey Young having that clutch gene. The man was shooting two for 15 against the Bulls the other night and then hit the second biggest shot of the whole game. Like, he wasn't, like, missing every shot before that. He got, He definitely got that clutch gene. Um, so the roles are different, so I'm picking hairs. Obviously, with Trey Young, he's the number one option, the focal point that the defense is working on. With Jalen Brown, has the luxury of basically being the number two. He's a second guy that teams scout for behind Jason Tatum. So his the stats, I mean, 26 points per for him to be the second option is really, really insane. Um, Trey Young shooting just hasn't come around. He's still been good. Um, Damian Lillard here, Donovan Mitchell, Jimmy Butler, well-rounded star. Uh, one of one bulldozer 15 for Zion Williamson 25 points per 7 rebounds 4 assists about a steal and a half Pascal Siakam love to see him this high man coming into the season I think he said he wanted to be top 5 or did he say top 3 or did he say top 10 either way I mean 14 is, is close to that I mean he's been good Paul George Shea Devin Booker round out the 11th spot now we get to the top 10 players in basketball according to the ringer and their writers Oh, my God. I didn't realize we are going on for this long, but here we go. John Moran, LeBron James, Anthony Davis. I can't be mad with LeBron being number nine, um, mostly because he's 37 years old. And the fact that he is widely still considered a top 10 player in the league is ridiculous. I mean, the stats speak for themselves. It, 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 it is a bit iffy that the Lakers have two top 10 players are still um, below 500. They've been playing a lot better recently than the beginning of the season. Um, but two top five, that lets you know. To, I mean, they didn't have anybody else listed. We didn't have no Russell Westbrook, Pat Bev, Austin Reeves listed. So they're one of the teams that only had two people. And actually, the more I think about it, I, I wonder what team had the most. It's probably the Celtics. Grant Williams, Al Horford, Malcolm Brockton. Did Derek White make the list? Jason Tatum? Yeah, yeah, it's 100% the Celtics had the most people on this list. I'm sure somebody has already done their research. At number, I'm, I'm spoiling. At number seven, we have Joel Embiid. This season, he's been crazy. And and I sometimes I feel for Joel Embiid because from his perspective, I wonder, he probably wonders what he has to do more to be consider, considered top five or legitimately the MVP. And I don't have an answer to that. It's probably winning more games and stuff like that because he has been clutch. He does play great defense. He's averaging 33 and about 10 with five-ish assists. The playmaking has been better every single season. He still gets a block per game. So it's like, from his perspective, what the hell do I have to do to get that? I don't know. Because the guy above him, Jason Tatum, is an MVP candidate this season. 
Um, one of the foremost shot creators. Clutch G, on ball defense, pull up threat is history bad. Just 30 points per game, eight rebounds, four assists, uh, 36 percent from three. At the value many shoots, that's pretty damn good, Jason Tatum. And the fact that a lot of them are just straight up pull ups, pretty good. The fifth best player in basketball is Kevin Durant, according to The Ringer. Clutch Gene as well, human highlight, but his highlights are different than some of the other people. He ain't gonna dunk on you, he ain't razzle dazzle, he just gonna pull up over you. And for me, that's a highlight. Shout out to Kevin. Next, we have Luca F4. I was low key thinking that I've listened to the Ringers podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I know they love him some Luca. I thought for sure Luca would be top three, he ends up being number four. Uh, no, not a big difference between it, but I felt very confident. So, lastly we have Giannis Jokic and Steph right those are the last three people that have not been listed I would assume that this is going to be Jokic three Steph Curry and then Giannis okay I mean that's 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 some cool stuff again I can't say that I agree with everything or even half the things or a third of the things but like the fact that they took the time to do this and, and they're saying that it's going to be updated regularly is some super cool stuff I low-key want to spend more time on the league pass rankings because that's more fun um, and more objective it's just a matter of what you prioritize as a watcher of basketball we got to come back to it i don't really want that video to be as long as it did but we went through the the top 100 players according to the ringer you let me know what you agree or disagree with and i'll be down in that comment section